Humans have been eating cheese for thousands of years. An edible 2,000-year-old cheese was once found frozen in the Siberian permafrost. And a 3,000-year-old cheese in an Egyptian tomb. Today, there is a huge variety of cheese types. Each has its own special taste and characteristics, but they all consist mainly of protein, actually casein and fat. What differs is the production method. Here we will focus on the production of so-called semi-hard cheeses, such as Edam, Havati, Gouda and Emmental. First, the main ingredient milk is tested for quality, heated to kill harmful bacteria and then separated into cream and skimmed milk in a separator. To ensure the cheese will have exactly the right fat content, a precise amount of cream is added back into the skimmed milk. This process is called milk standardization. Now let's start the actual cheese making. A vat, a special tank for making cheese, is filled with the pre-treated milk, and then starter culture and rennet are added. The starter culture, which contains non-harmful bacteria, gives the cheese its special aroma. The rennet, which is a set of enzymes, makes the milk thicken or coagulate. Rennet used to come from the stomachs of calves, but today it usually comes from special bacteria or yeast. As soon as the milk has the right level of coagulation, it is cut up with knives. This breaks it up into curd grains, which are solid, and whey, which is liquid. Cheese is made out of these curd grains. That's why we need to get rid of the whey, and about 30% of it is now drained off. The mixture of curd grains and the remaining whey is then heated by adding warm water to a temperature of about 38 to 45 degrees Celsius, depending on the cheese type produced. This kick starts the growth of the starter culture and makes the curd grains firm. Now the rest of the whey needs to be drained off. This is done in a tetra-pack casematic system, consisting of two buffer tanks, where the mixture is now pumped to and a draining column, which also preforms the cheese. Here's how it looks. The mixture of curd grains and whey is fed from the buffer tank into the column from the top. As it travels down the column, the whey is drained in three perforated sections at different levels. The more whey is drained from the curd, the more it compresses. At the bottom of the column, the curd is cut and emptied into a mold where the curd is pressed, forming a block or a wheel. This shapes the cheese, squeezes out the remaining whey and creates the rind on certain cheese types. Next, the cheese is placed into salt water, also known as brine, for between 12 hours and 3 days, depending on cheese type. This adds flavour and preserves the cheese by preventing the growth of harmful bacteria. Now we've reached the final stage of the process, ripening. This gives each cheese its unique flavour, texture and aroma. Gouda, for instance, first ripens for 10 days at 10 to 12 degrees Celsius, then at 12 to 15 degrees Celsius for up to three years. Cheese, it can take years to make, but probably won't last for millennia.